Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, I demonstrate a sequence of missions that lead up to and include a lunar landing using the Kumo Lunar Lander that I designed and presented in the previous video. We begin with the establishment of Lunar Gateway using the Falcon Heavy rocket, uh, which would be launching the first two modules of Lunar Gateway in real life. And I previously tried to do this mission sequence with Principia, which introduces n-body physics into Kerbal Space Program, but that didn't work out so well because I need much more experience with Principia, so I'm leaving that aside for now. In this case, we do not have n-body physics, so I'm much more familiar with how to rendezvous with things around the moon, and that will make things easier. I didn't initially thrall down the core for Falcon Heavy when I was supposed to, and I didn't reserve quite enough fuel in the boosters for return. Forgive me for that, but... In any case, we have more than enough Delta V for the payload, which is the propulsion module and the halo module for Lunar Gateway, as you can see at the top there. And I have done this launch before, and uh, Falcon Heavy can certainly send it over to the moon as it is supposed to. So, yeah, the fact that I didn't reserve enough fuel for landing of the boosters uh, will not come into play. So here is the transfer over to the moon, and we need to get it into a particular orbit around the moon. Uh, polar orbit. Well, it's supposed to be a rectilinear halo orbit or whatever it is. Uh, but in particular, because we don't have n-body physics in here, uh, we can't really do it exactly the way it's supposed to. Not that even with n-body physics, I can do that. Uh, I'm not very good at it. But here, what we're going to do is put the periapsis over the North Pole and the apoapsis over the South Pole, which is what basically what they will have. And the periapsis will be at about 1,500 kilometers, the apoapsis about 60,000. According to the specs for the real thing, it should be at 70,000, but we can't actually put it at 70,000 in here because that would be outside of the Moon's SOI when we're in patch conics mode, which is what we have here. Basically, this is a simplified version of orbits. And so the end body physics would be the more sophisticated version of orbits. Still, we have to do that by first boosting up into a really high orbit and then adjusting because we basically had our periapsis and apoapsis at the equator there because of the way we transferred. I'm sure NASA would be able to figure out when to transfer properly so that they wouldn't have the periapsis in the wrong place. But I did not, so we had to do an extra burn, fortunately. On this propulsion module, I added a whole lot of extra hydrazine so that we could do it all with RCS. Unfortunately, I did this all during live streams, and so my audience had to sit through really long RCS burns with the propulsion module of Lunar Gateway. But at least they didn't have to wait years for the ion engines. Here we have a launch of SLS with the Orion spacecraft as well as a, another service module, another Orion service module so that we can use that to A, refuel Orion spacecraft that are visiting, and B, move Lunar Gateway because it's nearly out of the RCS fuel after I did the maneuvers before. So that is what we're bringing over. And this also tests the capacity of SLS, though I did this during the Principia attempts to do these similar missions. So again, this is all supposed to lead to uh, landing on the moon, NASA style, basically. Uh, using the SLS and all this business, SLS Block 1B in this case, uh, to be able to carry the payload along with Orion. And again, using my custom lander, which I think is the best possible lander for long-term habitation of the moon, because it is using hydrogen and oxygen, which is something you can get from the moon, uh, which is important. Anyway, I discussed that all in a previous video where I explained the system, but the purpose of this video is to run through all of it to check whether the Kumo lander that I designed can be co-manifested with Orion and then also do the whole thing of going from Lunar Gateway all the way down to the surface and coming back up. If it was just a matter of going from low lunar orbit down to the surface and getting back to low lunar, or lunar orbit, that would be easy. There's no problem with that. But the Delta V requirements for getting uh, down from Lunar Gateway and back up to Lunar Gateway are much higher. So I have to check that. And so here we are. And for every time that we transfer over to the moon, we're going to be getting into a weird orbit that isn't anywhere near the orbit that we want. So we have to boost really high. 
The benefit of the really high orbits is that we can change the inclination very easily because as long as you're high up over the moon, you're going very slowly and it's easier to change inclination in that case. So that is what I do. Boost up first and then change the inclination, sort of line up with our target using the Orion service module and then we get over to Lunar Gateway with this. Now the little service module that Orion is tugging has its own controller and it will dock on the propulsion side whereas Orion itself will dock on the halo side, the habitation side. So here the service module is aiming for the propulsion side which has the ion engines. If we could use the ion engines practically speaking here there wouldn't be any problem because you know we have plenty of Delta V with them. The problem is we can't sit through that. <laughs> so unlike NASA we can't sit through the ion engine burns otherwise we uh, wouldn't need the service module that we just attached there. So the service module is saving us from having to deal with that. And so Orion has attached itself and the service module that we brought without the Orion, I mean uh, it doesn't have an Orion on top of it, it does the correction which brings the periapsis down to where it ought to be. It was a little bit high before. And then Orion departs. It's important to verify that it can have enough Delta V to return safely after having delivered a payload like this and indeed it did. So that is what we're doing here. This is the burn home. And here is our arrival at Earth. We of course have to jettison the service module that is attached to Orion. And off it goes. And we've tested the rest before. Uh, now this mod, the 40 Orion as well as SLS is Sobel's Space Launch System mod and I don't use the parachutes from it because those don't work. So very important, I am using real chutes here instead of the parachutes that come with it. That's the one thing that doesn't work very well in Realism Overhaul from that mod. So we learned that the hard way in previous videos. Anyway, this is an SLS launch of another module for Lunar Gateway, which will contain supplies. It's the Endurance module that I developed for my To Mars and Beyond series. It has a lot of room for food, water, and oxygen, but if you look in the upper right-hand corner there, we haven't filled it up yet at all because that would be too heavy. So it has just a little bit of food, water, and oxygen, but room for more for a long-term stay. So that is the idea, and of course it would have extra uh, room for people to habitate. So it'll be docked to the habitation section. Something like this is already planned for Lunar Gateway and again it's just to make sure that we can resupply it and have enough supplies for the whole plan and it'll give us some buffer just in case uh, timing doesn't work out right where Orion might be running out of supplies for the return because some of the returns can take a while so just in case we end up with an Orion arriving with a shortage of supplies then we can resupply with this load that we're carrying here so just wanted to make sure of that before we start testing the lander and this is like the whole mission sequence including the landing so Orion picks up that module from the stage and then does the mid-course adjustment and makes its way over to the moon. And over at the moon we do a relatively normal capture here. Uh, so to capture we like to be at periapsis most of the time in order to save on the delta V required for capture, but you'll see in the next few go-arounds that we are going to do something different. And here again we're boosting to a very high orbit in order to get an intercept but we're not correcting inclination yet. We're actually just going to intercept at the node there where we can cross. But that actually leads us to be on uh, escape trajectory. You can see we've already broken our orbit. So if we kept going here, we would be on escape. But it turned out that this was an okay thing to do because we are encountering it beforehand. And way up here above the moon, our velocities are very slow. You can see the orbital velocity 240-ish there. So that makes it easier to correct and basically I think it was costing about 240 to do the rendezvous here and then we dock. And of course without the huge endurance module that we have there which is based on the destiny module I think it is from the ISS 
Uh, we don't have to worry about Delta V. The Orion has plenty of Delta V to get back. That was after the burn and we had 150 meters per second left. So, yep, plenty of spare there. And here we are on parachutes. Overland, unfortunately, we ended up uh, overland alas. So, a landing for Orion. And here goes another SLS Block 1B, this time finally carrying the ascent portion of the lander. Now, in the ideal situation, the ascent portion would be the only portion of the lander, the Kumo lander, because it would refuel on the surface at the south pole using the lunar water, which would be converted to hydrogen and oxygen, and would refuel the lander, and so it would be the only module it use uh, its fuel to land, refuel, and then go back up again. And in that case, it would be just fine. There wouldn't be any, even any question about how much Delta V it has. It's only because we can't refuel on the surface right now that we need a descent module. And then with the descent module, we have to dump it before landing, and you'll see why. But then the lander has to do part of the landing burn, in which case it consumes just a little bit of propellant from the lander, uh, from the ascent part. And because it does that, there's a little bit of a question about the Delta V. Uh, unfortunately, the stage there was not properly stabilized, uh, so I just separated off the lander from the stage so that it could dock to Orion a little bit better that way. So that's the lander. Kumo means spider in Japanese, and it sort of has a spidery appearance, especially when we're landing on the moon. That'll be pretty clear. So here we are docking the two together and then they will make their way over to the moon. And here's a little correction. Unfortunately, the Kumo is a little bit dark in this sunlight. So yeah, that's one reason why it's sort of the ideal sort of lander for the moon, because it could later on refuel. And then once we do have refueling capacity on the moon, we can just dispense with the descent stage. And this would be a reusable lander around the moon. Just refuel and come back up and continue like that. You might have noticed that we captured high around the moon and that was in order to facilitate a approach. You can see uh, even though it doesn't have the little markers there we're converging with uh, the lunar gateway at perpendicular angles as we do but as long as it's high up it's all right and so we do make the rendezvous but the docking happens one part at a time so Orion docks first here and I get a little shot uh, with the music credit in the corner there though with the Moon, Earth, Lunar Gateway, Orion, and the lander. Orion docks, and then the lander docks on the side of the Halo module, where we also have a docking port. Was never intending to actually use the docking port there on the Halo module on this model, so I actually had blocked it off, but now turns out we need it. I top off its food, water, and oxygen because we accidentally depleted it, and then we have Orion go back because basically its job is done, it delivered that module. So in the future, of course, we wouldn't need to bring the descent module, but now we do. So next mission is bringing the descent module over to the moon and having it dock with the ascent module in order to make the full lander. So off goes the service module. And Orion comes in through the atmosphere per normal. And without much fanfare, splashes down. This time we are actually over water. I didn't pay much attention to that, frankly speaking. So, another launch of SLS Block 1B, this time with an Orion plus the descent module. Now, of course, if we're not sending Orion over, I've actually configured both the ascent and descent module for the Kumo lander to have independent control as well as RCS. So we wouldn't need to have Orion go. We would need, however, to have something that can capture it around the moon and get over to Lunar Gateway. Because if they use their own fuel for that, they won't have enough fuel to do the mission. So we could have the two modules of the Lunar Lander use their own fuel to uh, attach themselves to Lunar Gateway. Then in that case, we'd have to deliver some more fuel in order to make sure they're topped off before landing. Uh, which we could do. So a smaller launcher, uh, say a Falcon Heavy or a New Glenn or whatever, uh, would be able to sell, send the modules over to the moon potentially, and then we could top them off 
at the moon using further fuel tanks that are sent over. So any anything that has at least a uh, throw weight to the moon of 12-ish tons, that would be uh, their dry mass plus the amount that they need to capture, uh, would probably be able to send them over. So we don't need SLS each time, but it's sort of interesting to do these things with the Orion doing sort of the Apollo thing where it grabs the lander portions and gets them into orbit around the moon. So that's what we did. So basically, this decent portion is just a fuel pallet. There are no big engines on it. It's just got RCS ports and a docking port and then lots of fuel tanks uh, wrapped up in uh, multi-layer insulation. That's the gold foil. And so very simple module and uh, meant to be because this part does get destroyed. It gets dispensed with during the mission. And so we want it to be as cheap as possible. And here we are doing one of those oblique rendezvous with Lunar Gateway. And it turns out we're short of fuel. What happened was we went into a bad orbit with the Block 1B initially around Earth. And that was probably because I was talking to the live stream audience on Twitch. And so we wasted a lot of fuel there. And the Block 1B wasn't able to do our full transfer over to the moon. And instead, the Orion service module had to finish it off. And as a result, it was short of fuel when it comes to doing the capture burn and then the rendezvous burn. So we needed to deploy this Orion service module without Orion uh, to go over there and refuel the other Orion. And so we move off the lander portion, the descent stage, and have this attach, move the fuel over, making sure to keep enough fuel for the deorbit of the spent little canister, this thing. So I deorbit that around the moon, have it smack into the moon. Unfortunately, I left a little bit too much fuel with it. And then finally, redock the Orion to the descent stage, descent tanks. And then bring all that over to the station. Now it has enough fuel to do that. Now the drop tanks, the descent stage, they're basically drop tanks, uh, need to be placed very carefully on the Kumo lander. They have to be oriented just right to fit. Make sure to use force roll to get that right. And then the Orion can dock. Now, NASA would probably use a uh, robotic arm to put the drop tanks on. That would be easier. And you might not even need the RCS ports on the descent portion, but they are handy. And they certainly move things along a lot quicker in Kerbal Space Program. So, off we go. You can see the little engines on the ascent portion. Unfortunately, I don't have very good plumes for them right now, but at least it shows that the engines are properly clearing the drop tanks, right? Uh, it's nice to make sure of that. And here, the thing is that even the periapsis of Lunar Gateway is 1,500 kilometers, so it's not really close to the surface, and so we have to drop down uh, close to the south pole there. They would be landing at the south pole and so we do the burn to bring our apoapsis all the way down But it might have been more efficient to at the lunar gateway apoapsis bring it down closer initially so that when we do the burn to, uh, Over the north pole it would be more efficient the fuel cross feeding from the drop tanks was not very good uh, there was something weird with the docking ports, but another thing was I forgot to put MLI layers, the insulation layers, on the drop tanks, so we didn't have all the fuel that we needed. And then when Orion didn't have enough fuel to get to Lunar Gateway initially, I dumped some of the oxygen from the drop tanks. Uh, because the hydrogen had boiled off a bit, we needed to rebalance anyway, so I saved some Delta V by dropping some oxygen. Anyway, the point is we didn't have as much Delta V in the descent portion as we were supposed to, and we are going to find out whether we have enough here. There's this sort of spidery uh, shadow there for the Kumo lander. I mean, it really looks like a spider, but the shadow especially does. And we are setting down. And amazingly enough, it still wants to tip over. Everything wants to tip over for me around the moon. I know somebody had said to use a different mode instead of kill rotation, but still. It's amazing sometimes. All right, so I didn't have any Kerbals to set out and plant a flag with, so we just continue on. 
we try to re-rendezvous with Lunar Gateway, which this is the tough part. This is the part that we're checking whether we have enough fuel for. I really hug the surface very tightly to optimize all that Oberth goodness. You can look up the Oberth effect as far as how this is supposed to work. But anyway, it's good to do those kinds of burns close to the surface. But we did have to rendezvous high above the surface in order to get to Lunar Gateway, which is the tough part. And here we go, we didn't have enough Delta V. You can see I've plotted the rendezvous, but we're looking like we're about 200 meters per second short. I'm using the RCS to cover some of that. We ultimately were about 150 meters per second short, and that's probably because of the propellant that we didn't have in the drop tanks because of the lack of the MLI layers. And I tried to send Orion out to grab the ascent portion, but Orion didn't have enough fuel. Um, Orion barely had enough fuel to get back, so I decided to just send it back home. And we would send something else out in order to grab the ascent stage and save it and bring it into Lunar Gateway. Probably something to top it off with fuel as well, because it will need to be topped off with fuel. And then we can send another descent portion over as well, and then it can do the mission again. And so hopefully I will do that in the future. But yeah, it's pretty tight right now, tighter than I'd like. On the bright side, when I made the Kumo Lander, I made it intentionally fairly heavy. I mean, it was it's a very realistic mass. And maybe if we can cut down on some of that and make it a slightly less realistic mass, maybe we'd be better off. But uh, for now, it's a, it's a good mass to propose to NASA with, let me put it that way. So, yeah. Well, I'll have to think about this, but that's the full mission run through. That's how it's supposed to look. And with Orion coming back from all of that, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.